Vinland Saga Season 2 starts with an introduction to a new character named Ironer. And Ironer is this character who has a dream of becoming a warrior, a strong man in order to protect his family. Because previously his father was killed by pillagers who ruined their whole farm. So he wants to get big and strong to protect his family. Well, unfortunately for Einar, the same thing repeats itself. Instead of his father dying this time, he has to watch his sister and his mother die right in front of him. Yes, Vinland Saga Season 2 starts off in classic Vinland Saga fashion with a brutal and disturbing scene. Next, he is thrown into the slave trade. And this is where we meet an important character named Kettle. Kettle is going to be the owner of Einar. He bought Einar and once Einar is moved to the farm, he actually meets our main character from the previous season, Thorfinn. Thorfinn is now a slave, except this is not the Thorfinn that we all knew. This is a different Thorfinn. There's something wrong about him. He's a husk of his former self. Einar and Thorfinn are promised this dream by Kettle that if they build a farm out of this forest, they can sell that farm back to Kettle for their freedom. A good slave master. Or is he? Next, we're introduced to Arnheed. Arnheed is a beautiful woman who at first sight you may think is a lady of some sort, but she is in fact a slave just like Einar and Thorfinn. Einar and Thorfinn work towards their goal of getting freedom, but they're thwarted by these retainers that are essentially bullies and want nothing but the worst for these slaves because they are lower than them, which includes stopping their progress whenever they feel like it, or even trying to coax Kettle's son Ulmer, a new character who's basically a coward in human form, to kill Thorfinn and Einar to become a man. This is where we see a changed Thorfinn. This is no longer a man who wants to kill everybody and do whatever he needs to do to get to his end goal. This is a man who says, you can kill me if you want. I've done harm to people. What value does my life have? And this is where we start seeing some changes in Thorfinn. And just before Thorfinn is actually killed, he is saved by Snake, a new character. Snake is the leader of the retainers. And once he notices that Thorfinn and Ein are being mistreated, he steps in and ends this commotion immediately. After this, Einar confronts Thorfinn about what he was saying before and asks him if he's killed a lot of people, which Thorfinn replies yes. This causes Einar to go into a rage when Thorfinn is sleeping and almost killing him, but he decides against it. Next, we're introduced to a former character, Knut, except Knut has changed a lot. In fact, at this point, we see him become King Knut, and he's a different person than he was before. He's more ruthless and more willing to do whatever he needs to do in order to obtain his goal. Back to Kettle's farm. We are shown more progress of Thorfinn and Einar trying to make a farm out of this forest and eventually get to this freedom of some sort. And in the process, Thorfinn is finding his new self. He's thinking about the previous things that he did. He's coming to terms with what he did and he's changing. This is where we meet Kettle's father because Thorfinn and Einar need a plow in order to progress with their farm. We also find out about Snake's relationship with Kettle's father. Next, we're introduced to Thorgil, another one of Kettle's sons, except unlike Ulmer, he's the embodiment of what a Viking is, a strong person who is brawn over brain. Did I mention that Einar is taking a liking to Arnheed? When he first saw Arnheed, he fell in love with her. But unfortunately for Einar, Kettle has an interest in Arnheed as well because at the end of episode 7, we actually see Kettle laying on Arnheed's lap. This is a sorry guy. Thorfinn and Einar progress further and eventually get to the point where they can start laying some crops. And they lay these crops, but what happens is that these retainers pillage the land, essentially destroying Einar and Thorfinn's progress to that point with the crops. This enrages Einar, and Einar seeks out the retainers to get his revenge. And fortunately for him, he actually runs into them on the road, and he tries to incite something with them. But we see Thorfinn's changed demeanor as they approach these retainers in the road, and he says, let's try to avoid some type of conflict. But Einar's not having it and starts to almost get physical with the retainers. But before he can throw a punch, Thorfinn throws that punch and lets all of the rage out. Then a brawl immenses and Thorfinn gets knocked out. Yes, knocked out. And he goes into the shadow realm where he finds himself. 
He talks to Askeladd. He sees all of the people that he killed. He feels remorse for these people and he changes as a person. He no longer wants violence for anybody. He refines his view into a pacifistic view where nobody deserves to be harmed no matter what they do. And after this, there's a time skip. Thorfinn and Einar have finished their farm and they're about to gain their freedom. They only have a little bit more to go. But Kettle, being the good guy that he is, maybe, is going to let Thorfinn and Einar walk free when he comes back. As he has to travel to the capital because he's heard the news of King Canute's brother on his deathbed and he needs to pay his respects. Next, we're back to King Canute. And King Canute is visiting his brother, his brother who has only treated him as a respectful human being, a great brother to him. But we're revealed in these scenes that King Canute actually poisoned his own brother that's only been good to him in order to get power. Wow, what a disgusting person Canute has deformed into. We see Kettle and his sons travel to the capital and Omer absolutely humiliates himself. I mean, the balls, the brawn on this guy is insane. In order to try and become one of the king's guard like his brother Thorgil, Omer takes on the challenge of cutting this pig in half by showing off his swordsman skills and he absolutely humiliates himself. Him being so down on himself is set up by King Canute because Canute wants to take over Kettle's farm and take everything for himself in order to gain enough funds in order to maintain his military and has his henchmen go out and make fun of Omer inciting a fight so his guards can call treason against Kettle and his brothers and take away their land. Did I mention that Leif is also in this city and he happens to talk to Kettle and find out that they have a slave that's named Thorfinn? Well, this eventually leads to Leif and Bug Eyes sneaking out Kettle and his family back to their land in order to avoid King Canute's army. New character alert, Gardar. Remember Arnheed? Yeah, she had a former husband who left her abandoned their village in order to go see Glory and was caught as a slave. Well, he just happened to be nearby and was looking for Arnheed and happened to run into her. Now, you thought it was complicated because Einar had a love interest in Arnheed and Kettle has a love interest in Arnheed. Well, here comes a third man known as Gardar. And Gardar throws an absolute wrench into this whole situation to now nobody knows what to do, except Snake. Snake, who had his men killed by Gardar, wants nothing but to capture Gardar and either kill him or sell him for the bounty on his head. So Snake and Gardar go at it, with Gardar eventually being captured due to his injuries. Now Arnheed, not willing to sit by, tries to rescue Gardar, and everything works in her favor, and she actually succeeds at doing this. But he's injured once again, injured to the point where he's passed out, so they have to hide him. And where do they hide him at? Kettle's father's house. But Snake is still on high alert. And Einar and Thorfinn actually want to help Arnheed because Arnheed is a friend to them and a potential love interest for Einar. So they actually help Arnheed by using Einar as a sort of guard our escapee dummy and having Snake and the guys chase him. But unfortunately, as Thorfinn is trying to bring Gardar onto a carriage in order to make him go away, Snake is too smart for this and he realizes something is array. So he goes back to check and this is where Thorfinn is assaulted head on with his ideals. Is he going to stand in front of Snake and protect Gardar and Arnheed or is he going to back off and stay true to his never harm anybody ideals? This is where it changes for him. Because sometimes you need to stand up and protect. And this is where he tries to protect Gardar in unarmed combat versus Snake, a skilled warrior. Now, Thorfinn is getting the better of Snake, but Snake's goal is to kill Gardar. It is not to defeat Thorfinn. And this is where Thorfinn messes up and loses the battle. Because Snake actually stabs Gardar as he is asleep, which leads to his untimely death. But before Gardar can die, he wakes up in a frenzy and his warrior instincts kick in and he almost strangles Snake to death. But the beautiful siren Arnheed saves Snake with her majestic voice. And Arnheed and Gardar ride off into the sunset 
and they have their dreams and they have their nostalgia on past experiences and reflect as Gardar fades into nothingness. Ketel managed to escape from King Canute and comes back, except he's a broken man. He's going to lose his farm now. What does one man with a farm of, let's say, 15 or so retainers, maybe hundreds of people in total that will support him, going to do against a full nation? Nothing. The man is broken. And as he comes back, the nice man that we knew Kettle to be is gone with the wind. Because when he's informed of the only person that he really cares about at this point, aren't he trying to escape? It absolutely messes up his mental. The nice guy is gone. And he whips on he like the slave she is and puts it on her, almost beating her to death. As King Canute's forces approach onto Kettle's land, he gathers everybody up, his sons, and they ultimately decide to fight against King Canute. As this is all happening, Leif frees Thorfinn and Einar from their imprisonment from helping Arnheed and Gardar. Then Thorfinn and crew try to help Arnheed and ultimately escape with her to somewhere else where she will be more safe. We're seeing glimpses of the war against King Canute and they ultimately get absolutely slaughtered because a nation versus a farm? Come on, what, what are these people thinking? But something unexpected happens. Thorgil actually sneaks behind King Canute and almost kills him at the opportunist moment. He fails and has to escape, and we're shown what happens in battle. People getting their limbs chopped off, people getting injured, people dying, all kinds of terrible things. And while this is going on, Arnheed actually passes away. She succumbs to her injuries. Everybody is devastated by this. And after all of this happens, Thorfinn learns that King Canute is coming after this island and he's doing what he's doing so Thorfinn decides to stand up and go against King Canute and how does Thorfinn do this by showing his resolve instead of fighting he goes down to these group of people and he lets this guy hit him as many times over a hundred times he puts a bet on it in order to speak with King Canute Thorfinn ultimately pushes through with this and gains the respect of everybody else for his tenacity but his face is absolutely bludgeoned. We then see a conversation between Thorfinn and King Canute, and this really displays their different characters. They have two different opposing views that ultimately want to lead to a similar endpoint of a utopia. And King Canute respects this and decides to back off of Kettle's farm. Then Thorfinn, Einar, and crew all head back to Thorfinn's homeland, and this is where Thorfinn reunites with his sister and his mother. And he decides that he needs to be committed to his goals and sets off on an adventure. Leave a comment below letting me know what you thought about this new Vinland Saga season. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for similar anime content in the future. I will see you in the next video.